Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Shooting the Shift. We've got a guest, it's Claire. Claire's here. Claire from Semi Slicks here. We've got uh, Bryn's that way. He's drinking a glass of juice and alcohol and beer that, and beverage. That, that way's Matt. <laughs> that one's Milton. Oh, hello there, my farmers. And we <laughs> may have been drinking. Matt is Matt's the designated driver tonight. He's going to be the responsible grown up and keep us all on topic. Matt, you're going to make that's, sure we all get home, okay? <laughs> well, yeah, I already, you're already at home, so uh, my job here is done. <laughs> <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> okay. No, I haven't got a mic. I can drop. <laughs> so, so Claire's with us because we're going to talk about events or something this week. And really importantly, Claire has organised the largest stand of MX5s in Europe before now. <laughs> and we all... a big claim. It's a bit, it is a big claim, but it's also true. And we say, Bam, that because of Claire is how we all met, one way or the other. We can actually say that, yeah. Because of Jackfest, JE or whatever, we've all been on that yep. stand. So... <clears throat> Basically, if Sorry, you hate guys. if you hate it's all the content, content, yeah. If you hate the content we put out, blame her. <laughs> Go over to her Instagram and post on it. And if you own an MX5 and you've ever met another MX5 owner ever, you can thank Claire for that. Yeah. <laughs> Big up the MX5 community. <laughs> We're all a bunch of homos. <laughs> <laughs> So, and we've been cancelled. We, no, <laughs> we have not been cancelled. That wasn't it's homophobic. Only, only Milton's been cancelled. Yeah. yeah, that's it. It's a, uh, okay. a four-person podcast now. We've been over this. For Milton to be cancelled and have his sponsorship cancelled, I have to start giving a shit about what the internet thinks. And I don't. <laughs> we just like making, making ourselves happy and other people happy. Yeah, it's all a bit of fun. Right, so... Events, stuff that we go to, where we hang out and do stuff. Should we start from the beginning, Ben? What, like, but, at, like first, the intro again. at first there was the word. Are we going that far back? Adam and Eve, you... where do you want me to start, mate? No, you bum. Like, what events do we all go to first? Or what event did Claire do first? Yeah, what What was the first event you organised, Claire? That's a good oh, start. don't even go there. It would have been something back in Birmingham, probably. So I don't really want to talk about that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's in Birmingham, yeah. that's enough. That's all we need to know. <laughs> um, <laughs> you've heard of the uh, injunction against car meets. You can also <laughs> thank Claire. You know what? That is not far off the truth, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I think we can all blame Collins for the injunction in Birmingham. Yep. Collins and Claire's. No, yep. Karen's. <laughs> it's, it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, probably been doing like jack meets and stuff for the best part of 10 years now. Um, MX5's just kind of naturally happened. Did Jack Fest 2018 with the MX5 takeover. Um, it was just through talking to people in the community and people going oh what's this and it's just engaging with people I suppose isn't it and like getting people to come on board and join the community and just sharing that vibe really across social and getting people to come and be present and it's pretty awesome stuff really it was the forums right? Awesome. yeah back when um, forums were a thing still M- MX5 yeah. nuts yeah mm. nuts nuts I <laughs> have been threatened with being banned from there again already <laughs> I can't do anything about that anymore. I, I left. I left a while back. Yeah, I was. Uh, I even think... doing my degree to be to be admin in nuts. It sort of exploded. Mad, didn't it? So to put that into context, well, you have to have a degree to be an admin in nuts. <laughs> wow. At this point, probably yeah, it's pretty mad. To put my relationship with nuts in in perspective, I've put an admin. <laughs> oh, wow, <you> said that. <laughs> I've put one of their admins in a bin. And rolled him round a campsite. <laughs> Shout out, Mike. We miss you, guy. Oh, is that he bought Mike a VW? Quinn? That yeah, he bought he bought a VW. He's not still around, is he? He's, He's still, still alive. alive. Is he like admining just on the stealthy? 
without actually saying or doing anything. I don't know. He sold his MX5 when I uh, bought the when I collected Carmen the case for He got the <laughs> Carmen gear, Saint gear, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he broke the car for parts, and I bought. I think I bought the arches for him, and then accidentally collected the cage for Milton. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you, Ryan, you've got this cage. Okay. <laughs> but you'd already bought it and hadn't arranged to collect it. And yeah. he, was, he told me it was for you. And it's like, oh, I'm seeing him next week. It's oh, uh, part. I'll pick it up for him. Yeah. And then I sold it about two years later for the same price. And you didn't fit it. Whoops. Sounds about right. I mean, it paid for a year's drifting. That's not bad. That'll work. Huh? Yeah, and then and then and then the other side of the bit with with MX Five Nuts is that time I got banned for which com- which time the, the one <laughs> where I, the, the one where I compared the entire admin team to a bunch of Nazis. Oh, okay, that, yeah, that'll get, get you banned. banned. Yeah, <laughs> that'll get you banned in most groups. It's not it's exclusive awesome. to MX Five. No, no, I think. All that happened was they told me to stop posting pictures of Kim Jong Un as answers to questions. So I posted a picture of the Nuremberg rally and congratulated them on the success of their admin meeting that year. <laughs> I think no, it's no. really difficult to like moderate groups when they're so, so big and it's, it's I mean, hard to keep everyone happy without I, being a Karen, as you so rightly put it. So it's hard. It's really hard. I mean, I did go just go and have a quick look. and There are 22,000 members in MX5 Nuts now. Like, that's an insane amount of people. Right, question? right. To put that in perspective, when I joined 2012, 2013, it was like 3,000 members. There were three Facebook groups. There was MX5 Buy and Sell, Rose to Society, and MX5 Nuts. That was it, to be honest. It was mainly the forum, though, wasn't it? Yeah, massive. I was going to say, that's... That's that's about the three groups it was when I joined, and that was when did we start drifting, Bryn? Like 13, 14? I don't know what is time. I twenty fourteen for me. Well, what what was um, Jack Fest two at Donington when that the, was seven the, years ago? It that, came up on my timeline on my on my Facebook on my memories the other day. Seven years ago. Okay, so it would have been just after that because that is the first event I ever went to, the first car show I ever went to, and I just bought my MX-5 and I turned up and then it was that Japfest 2. Yeah. Uh, I was... I remember was, that. Mine was at a Japfest, I think, seven or eight years ago, and the very first thing we did when we arrived was lock the keys in the boot. <laughs> I think you can't, someone. You can't be an MX5 owner if you've I think that. someone on the stand has always done that. Any MX5 owner. And then what you do is you run around the group and go, "Can I borrow your key to see if I can get into my boot?" <laughs> <laughs> what What I managed to do is the center console on mine wasn't very strong, so I could just bend it open and flip the lever. I had. I was already. How in... still an MX5 101? I was yeah, already in hard. That's mode. if it's got a lever. Yeah. I was already in hard top mode. So we had to get the AA out so that I could borrow tools from the AA van because I knew how to break into it with the hard top on. <laughs> See, I've never done that. I've never locked the boot in the car. But You've uh, never the, locked the boot. You've never locked the boot in the car, mate. <laughs> never locked the boot in. I've never locked the keys in the boot, but I, I have uh, started the car closed the door, the central locking decided that that meant it was lock time and then the car was just sat there idling. Somebody <laughs> had to take me home to go and get my spare keys. Do you know, wow. I don't I don't even lock my car anymore. Where do you uh, live, Milton? In a garage. It's a race car, isn't it? So. <laughs> um, that that um, MX-5 nut stand you're on about was uh, six years ago. Wow. Because I've, I've just looked at... I remember when we went to that one... I set up a time lapse on the fence. Like I was Ooh. one of the first people in, put a GoPro on on it, and then set up a time lapse, um, and I it sat that. on YouTube. That was I, an awesome video. I come I uploaded it on the eighteenth of August, two thousand fourteen. So it's two thousand fourteen that that year was. In yeah, because that's when I. I've just realised a thing. It's Claire's fault that violent running even exists. Because I didn't I... meet. A... <laughs> I wouldn't. I would not have met. I would not Connor. have met Connor and Tish without combustion punk stands. No way. Is yeah. that how you guys met? Yep. Yeah. We wow. all met through JAE. If you, My yeah. first year was 2014. If, if anyone remembers the days of Camp Retard, 
<laughs> in fact, I only met Van through Combustion Punks, actually. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. In fact, Bren, you were you were one of the ones that met me when someone shouted, have you met Bam, it's the guy in the fur coat. Yep, that's the one. <laughs> and that someone was Claire. <laughs> Show camping, like, that was, yeah. Yeah, show camping was always manic back in the day. So we've all grown up a bit now, and Claire does put on far more responsible events than the ones that we attend. No, she only takes pictures of the responsible bit. (laughs) Yeah. It's all about promotion. You have to promote the right bits. Yeah. Make sure you like and subscribe. Speaking of which, the video that comes out in the middle of this week from last Tuesday. That's going to be so cool. It will be. No, so I went to an MX5 event that Claire saw, Claire organised at Caffeine oh. and Machine and filmed pretty much exclusively Ferraris and McLarens while I was there. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I'm going to an event on Sunday that's all MX5s, so I can film that. If it doesn't um, rain. Elvington. Oh, yeah, if, if we make it. Mm. Um, at, at the moment, Nicole's MX5 is smoking quite a lot, so we think... Maybe head gasket, or because it's been sat around since November, not running. It's so definitely there's only, that. There's only one way to find one. out, Matt. Shoe it. Yep. Get it to 100 mile an hour and see what happens. We, we, it, we've yeah. got breakdown recovery, so we're fine. That's we yes. for wimps. <laughs> you should um, make cable can... ties, bottle of oil, bottle of water. Yeah, bottle of water, leaking radiator, parts. possible head gasket. We'll be fine. Um, I'm yes. going to do a visual representation of Matt doing 100 miles an hour in his MS5. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's weird because I'm not. Dri- I mean, that's weird because I don't own an MX5 and I'm not driving. Oh, that means it'll be even worse because it'll be Nicole having to hold onto the shaky wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure, Matt, if you guys do break down, that they drop you off at the event so you can still be included in the record. Yeah, well, it'll be so an AA van pulling it. <laughs> <laughs> well, last last time they tried the um, the world record, I missed it in my MX5 because the supercharger belt snapped, and I was busy fixing it so I could carry on doing passenger rides for Buffy. Um, and it would be sad to know that that Carl's car breaks down on the way, so we miss it again. Yeah, just come pick my car up if you want. I you're in the opposite direction. I'm not gonna lie; I've never taken part in one of those world record attempts because I knew I wasn't getting my own Guinness certificate, and that's the only f-ing reason to do it, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's uh, no I in team, Bam. Yeah, but I'm a salesperson, and that makes me a selfish twat. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be the guy doing a burnout. I, I'm just waiting until we get there, because by the sounds of it, they're trying to group them into colour, and I'm not sure where they're going to put us. Yeah. You're <laughs> chame- it's chameleon for people listening. In the middle, if... in the middle so that it no. magically brends from blue to purple. No, leader of the pack. Right at the front. If you stand out, you should be noticed. And if you're going to yeah. be noticed, just go straight at the front. Yeah, so, maybe there'll be an other section and you'll be with all the pink rattle and Nardo grey cars. <laughs> Do they still exist? Is that still a theme? Yeah. 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 Still Unfortunately. We don't know why. What, pink rattle cans? Cute. No, the Nardo grey. Nardo grey. Just... Or primer colour. Yeah, that, that's what I think of when I I'm think just, of yeah. that. I'm just checking no one can see the buried stash of rattle cans in my office. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah Gee, but yours aren't grey. <laughs> no, mine are all some sort of weird rave mint seafoam green colour at the moment. But I dig that. That's so cool. It's funky and retro and vibrant and bright and not grey. I mean, yeah. if we're talking about MX5 colours, we're talking about Claire's wrapped car, don't we? Paint. <laughs> Good old hashtag, it's not a wrap. Yeah. It's not wraps. It's not wraps. <laughs> we know it's not. It just became it just became one of those in things that you saw your car and it's like, is it a wrap? It, it still exists and it's it's up in a unit in Doncaster and it's it's very much exclusively for track use now. Um, but it's it's pretty sad that I haven't really seen a paint job that compares in what is it now? Ten years old that paint job. That, that was the first car I knew you with. Mm. Yeah, I've still I've still got it. But what I mean is I don't I don't you know people are doing the same thing. This this sort of Nardo Grey theme, this sort of aqua mint theme bam, and it's like where's the innovation? Where's the creativity? I, Other than the vibe I'm, and stuff. The I, innovation and the creativity is in this class that I move on to next class. Um, <laughs> 
I'm, I'm doing the faded pink look on the RX-7. Yeah, so it's, so, so it's pink, pink, gang. Yeah. It's because... It's, it's, it's because the bad colours. All, all the other, like, MX-5 Drift Boys right now are all stealing our colour and they're all painting their cars red. So we're just letting them go pink because, like, that's different. But it's not painted pink, it's faded pink. It's faded pink, yeah. It's it's enough, commitment. yeah. You've got to stick with that colour for a long time. That's how you know you're committed to that lifestyle. And you can't achieve it with a wrap. You, can, no. you cannot wrap your car faded pink, that is true. <laughs> I, and I'm just one of the blue boys. To be fair, one of you the guys... Wish, that... You wish you were part of Team Incom. Yeah! Sorry, we've got to leave a pause because I can't say it, so I just put a sound effect in. <laughs> no one can say that name. Only to... I think Bryn's the only person that's ever said it. <laughs> to, on, to, to be fair, back on the faded pink colour, Buffy Racing had a track car that was faded pink, and then at some point they decided to paint, paint it, committed to it, and painted it neon pink. Speaking of Buffy racing, I have to make a six-man one of these overlay things now. Spoilers. That's, that's Bryn's fault. Spoiler I'm alert. Genuinely not complaining about that one. No, neither am I. No. Bryn winging out the next guests we can unveil at some point, maybe. Does that mean we get a discount code? No, it doesn't, Milton. Every time. Brent, Brent spent enough money with them for, that they'll do anything for him now. <laughs> I've spent some money. <laughs> and, <laughs> does, does it work yet? <laughs> does what? <work? laughs> yeah, his engine's mint. Has it started yet? No. Why? Fine. What's it missing now? Uh, I forgot to make some stuff. <laughs> So uh, I have to wait for a while. <laughs> Even as a car, right? When you turbo a car, you can't just point the intake air temp sensor randomly at the intake anymore. It actually has to be in it. Like, <laughs> what the f*** is that about? That's no fun. And I completely whoa, whoa. forgot about that until like yesterday. And I was like, oh shit, I haven't done anything with that yet. So Brim, before, was your just air intake temp was it just sort of just going... Yeah, I'll go over there yeah, somewhere. That's yeah, it about warm. It was cable tied to a small bracket that I put on the side of the brake booster, uh, and it just used to flap around like this. So I broke one sensor. <laughs> oh, I was just trying to work well, out why you hadn't got it like on the on the uh, on the AFM, and then I remembered you were throttle buddies. Yeah, so I just had the four throttle buddies and this little sensor pointed sort of at them nearby. It was great. <laughs> Close it, enough it was, there. It was basically engine bay temperature rather than intake temperature. Yeah, engine bay temperature near the intake is as good as you can ask for. <laughs> and he's the one with a degree in engineering. Yeah, he's the engineer. That's how, right? When you've got a degree in engineering, what you learn is just how much you can budge things and it still works. <laughs> Facts. So, back to the topic. Events. Matt, you're meant to be the designated driver today and I've just had to do back to the topic. Hey, I, I, my job's done. You're all at home. Yeah, but the further and further for my next attempt to get a sponsorship for this show, the further and deeper in, I go into this here jar of O'Donnell's moonshine, <laughs> the less I'm going to be capable of this. Hashtag give oh us God. some money, please. We'll film a whole oh my God, episode. Imagine being shine. sponsored by a moonshine company. It's Brin, both... can we engineer a car to run on moonshine? You don't need yeah, to. I'm sure you could. It's got high enough alcohol content. Yeah. There's probably a content where it has to be above that amount and then it would work fine. <laughs> if... Brent, it's time to do some maths. <laughs> it is not time to do some maths. We are far too deep into this alcohol fueled train to do any maths. <laughs> choo choo! <laughs> what, what were you saying about getting back on topic? Yeah, but let's steer it now. Hey! Now I can drink and now I can have another one. So in this, there's moonshine and ginger ale. Still left out. Not only is my cup empty, it's also non-alcoholic. Oh, this isn't alcoholic. No one was asking you, Matt. You're just the designated driver. Okay, bye. Love He's just switched everybody around on my screen doing that as well. <laughs> if I do it multiple times, do we move again? No. <laughs> Somebody else do it and we'll all move again. We're not playing musical chip. <laughs> oh, Continuity. 
So, now that we've had that continuity issue this episode... <laughs> Bam, is this a good swishy point so Claire can go get a beverage? This is a swishy point so Claire can go get a beverage. Let me pause Wait, what's this? <laughs> but, so, Welcome back to the shift where, unfortunately, we have lost our designated driver. We're very sad about this. And this... so I will now be stepping up and be entirely serious for the rest of the episode. <laughs> So anyway, so so during the bit where Matt had to bail, uh, unfortunately, we uh, I did some drunk maths. This is why I am the mad scientist. I cannot power my car on my moonshine, so I'm going to have to keep drinking it for the rest of the episode. <laughs> chin chin. Turns out it needs to be 75% proof, so we need to get me stronger moonshine. 75% or 150 proof, that's the one. You need a better potatoes, my dear. <laughs> so, moonshine is a thing we drink at events, so we can now get back onto the topic of events. I think okay. you should be the Hang designated on. driver now. Bryn. Bryn, what's what's the future? Hydrogen fuel. <laughs> moonshine fuel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd like to take that theory and I'd like to be oh. back on track <laughs> okay. and talk about hybrid events. So I absolutely love the idea of being at an event and you've got Bam over here just with his camera walking around recording stuff and you have no idea and we're waiting for that video to drop when, Bam? Uh, this week. <laughs> okay, some point this week. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> Because this video goes that. out next week. This goes out on Monday, so it will Monday. be this week, Milton. This week, okay, cool. Through the magic yeah. of time travel, this week. <laughs> it's like the whole like hybrid notion of events, where so much of it is becoming like digital and digitized, and like you can physically be there. But what about the people who miss out, who can't get there, I, who haven't managed to get a ticket? That there's such a gap in the market there. I really like the idea of a fleet. Of little robots with iPads, right? That you can drive around the event and that's how you experience the event. <laughs> okay. What do the iPads give you? Like VR or like a game sort of interactive play or... You get to recreate Sheldon Cooper sat on his bed trying to not die. Oh, the iPads are just FaceTime. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember that episode. <laughs> that's quite clever. So if you want, you're not sure if you're going to like the vibe of the event, you go there on your iPad. Yeah. You're sitting at home, you're all comfy, you're not getting wet. Yeah. But your then, iPad is. Well, it's not your iPad, somebody. it's Bam's iPad because you've paid his company to rent it. Yeah. Okay. It's it's a Bam pad. <laughs> <laughs> and you can drive right up to people's cars and make horrible comments about the way that they've built them and they can't punch you. Yeah, you can totally be a keyboard warrior in real life, like IRL, without getting the... Yeah. yeah. That's brilliant. Tech scary, yeah. right? That's dangerous. Does that mean you can say to people, look, the other side, having the other fake si wheels is not a The build. other side of that same coin is, given, as we all know, yeah. I do anime stickers, right? I like my anime a bit. We could get all sword art online about it. And make them have like a virtual suit that they have to wear, and they can never leave the event unless they die. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this turn. You have been playing far too much Ark or Boat Simulator, <laughs> Simulator, or whatever it is you've been Hang on. on. <laughs> Claire, how do you know about Ark? Oh. I like, I don't know. I have too many nerdy friends, I guess. Claire plays Ark. <laughs> <laughs> Bam, I told you that in confidence. Claire. Are you going to be in Milton's Guild? <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually called a tribe. Oh, I may or may not have like three and a half thousand hours on the game. Dude, no wonder the background to your video is such a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. Right. I've been in this since the break, guys. <laughs> so, you know, you're right. I think... It's an interesting one because there's some events that I'm just never going to get to go to because of budget, right? Like SEMA. I am not going to SEMA because the hotel itself is like five grand. Ah, bam. I know a way of getting into that for cheaper. How? It's a, I know a company who does road trips and you road trip from one side of the country to the other and it's called Road to SEMA and you and, road trip. And how much does that cost, Milton? About three grand all in. 
<laughs> cool. Right. Great plan. <laughs> I saved you two. <laughs> and you get a road trip and it's not just the event. Yeah, but I also don't get a week in Vegas. I just have to drive there. I'd much no, rather like have a th- party in Vegas for five days. Yeah, I've been in Vegas twice. It's not that good. I've been in Vegas a few times. It is. You just clearly weren't partying in the right spots. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> so, so right. So, so virtual SEMA. Virtual, it does make a good idea, actually. Virtual, because virtual Tokyo Auto Salon. It doesn't just necessarily events. It could be tracks that you'd maybe. Maybe for reasons you'll never get to go to because they're closed. We've got an extension of the band pad, right? You sit in your home racing simulator and there's a band pad powering the car. Yep. And it's like playing like Gran Turismo. But if you crash the car, it proper goes wrong. Have you ever driven like a simulator or like VR racing? Yeah, I've got one there. No. How disgustingly, like, disorientating is it when you crash for one of the first times? I, it makes you feel... I don't even know how to describe it. It's like dying. It's I like never, you literally just die. I never, went to, I never worked at Overclockers and spent my lunch breaks in the VR room <laughs> dicking about on the racing sims. That never okay. happened. So I'd probably be the only one that would throw up then if I crashed. I don't think you would. You get used to it after time. Yeah, that, that's it though. That's what I mean. It's like one of the first times you experience it. It's so disorientating when you physically crash. It's just such a shock. Oh, with the like crashed a lot or anything, but like. <laughs> oh, driving on a simulator is nothing like driving. Well, it's Man, very it's, hard. It's different between the two, isn't it? It's between a game and between like real life and. Because we know people, we do a lot of drifting, me and Bryn, on, online, and there's a lot of people that started online and then went to real life. And the transition's easy, but if you started on real life and then go into a wheel, it's really hard (laughs) because you're not, you've not got your ass to tell you what the car's doing. I think that's a lot of it. And I think you can improve it with everything like you can improve, but with cash, like with money, if you're going to buy yourself a top of the range and you get like interactive seats and wheels and stuff like that, then it's going to be a bit different, but it will still never be the same as being... Well, maybe it will be at some point. Maybe it will be. You guys still, have like a lot more of it than I have. A lot more like seat time, as it were, in both. Scenarios. That's what I was about. It's still invaluable seat time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, of course. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Even rather, if you, yeah. I'd still rather get out on track. Yeah, we all would. But when you can go do a, th- a thousand laps of a track you've never been to for free. Yeah. yeah that's, that's it's it's high initial outlay, and then every minute you spend on it. That price per lap goes down. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. That's true. But speaking of events that you might, because well, I really want to go to Japan. That is also true if you buy a field and you put a racetrack in your back garden. See, this, mean, is, this is something I absolutely love. I started out with, we, 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 we slightly diverged, but it's still sort of on topic. But like auto solos, auto testing, yeah. car control. I, yep. it's, it's, I think it's like it's crucial like, I feel like so much of it should be like almost and I'm sure in some countries I'm sure it is but incorporated into like your driving test I don't know man I don't, I don't know I just I think it's such an important part of being a good driver isn't it in Canada part of it I think I don't know like where the moose, it is there's a moose test icing? or something I know I know in Scandinavia you have to do like ice skidding as part of your test okay maybe maybe it's something like that that I've heard yeah yeah, in some of the countries that have real extreme winters, they do teach some pretty ridiculous things. Yeah. Can, can you imagine that, though? Like, here you go for your driving lessons. Uh, oh, we're going to do bay parking today. And they're like, today we're going to proper f- lose it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then you, you get paired up with someone who's not very good. <laughs> oh, I only crashed into him because he's spun because he can't hold angle. <laughs> They're not like teaching you to do twinning. In- <laughs> <laughs> you're on your driving test and you've got your learner plates on your door in <laughs> Margaret in a fiesta. Okay, you're not passing your driving test until you lay down a 90-point run. It's funny you me- It's funny you mentioned driving tests like because when I took mine, right, I grew up. More. You only had to go backwards and forwards, didn't you? I'd grown up. I'd grown up. Like, I'd grown up with a lot of seat time on track because my dad was colorblind, so I had to drive his race cars for him. So I got into my driving test, 
And my driving instructor never had a problem with the racing starts that I do at every single light that goes red, amber, green. <laughs> Including the launch car. <laughs> Gone. Yeah. <laughs> Driving test guy. 11 minors. Wow. <laughs> and they're just all, they were all, he was like, it's just all your racing starts. You need to stop doing that on public roads. And a really important thing, Mr. Driving Test Man, is I haven't. I still do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he was trying to fail you at the time. He knew this was never going to end. But I'm, I'm I'm publicly challenging you into a, ra- a racing start. Which Wait, car? In what you, which, which car are you bringing? Just the reaction time on the tree. Okay. Bye. Can we go straight line down pod, and I'll bring something to prove that it doesn't matter. You just said about racing starts. Yeah, but there's no. Hang point on, doing what, it. what kind? What there's time no would your point. stage you do? What power is your MX-5? 223. Brent, do the brake horsepower per tonne maths, please. Melton's going to win because <laughs> you'll still be having to, like, reel in your anchor when you go. <laughs> Speaking of boats, how's your NC, Claire? It's solid. It's really good, yeah. That, that is, is not... Solid. I saw it. <laughs> I, I saw it on Tuesday, right? Right. And she describes it as solid. Right, but hang it on. clearly bam, has bam, bam. at least been it, tried solid. to be used as a boat in the ocean once because there's definitely rust on the arch. Only the arches. Only For an MX-5 arch. lover, what is an NC actually like? Ignoring all the internet memes. Oh, now you've put me on the spot to try and encapsulate it in a sentence. It's, <laughs> it's a bigger, more powerful <laughs> MX-5. It really is. And I'll be honest, since I've spent... I can't even tell you how many years it were, like six, seven, eight years in a Mark One. Well, various Mark Ones, then go into the Mark Three. It did take me a while to sort of appreciate it for an MX-5. And um, the traction control is really basic, so it'll kick in like quite frustratingly. So you turn that off as soon as you get in. And as long as you've got decent, <laughs> decent wheels, like decent tires, decent brakes. I've got the sport model, so I've got Bill Steins with I back suspension. Like, sorry, Bill Steins with I back springs, and it's. Slightly lower than standard. I've I've got up like thicker RX eight anti roll bars, um, so it's sort of not as spongy because they are quite wallowy. But I I really enjoy it. I find it it is an MX five. It is an MX five, and I think the only thing I can say about it is it's very le- it's less mechanical. That that's the essence of it. It's less mechanical. It's much smoother. So when it breaks away, it's like. Oh, it's beautiful. It's like ice skating. It's just so smooth and elegant in comparison well, to is. like it's ah, so the Mark One. It's just, it's just a more grown-up version, but it's it doesn't replace the Mark One, which is why I've still got three. <laughs> they are, are very comfy, aren't they? Yeah, because yeah. I daily it as well. I've had it for three years, and I've done something like sixty, seventy thousand miles in it. Oh my god! I know, which is why it needed some welding. So it is solid. It's just like cosmetically. With three of the Mark Ones to sort out, the daily is just the daily. But I love driving an MX-5 everywhere. Would you daily it to Santa Pod by any chance? Would I daily it down to Santa Pod on a Wednesday? That happens <laughs> yeah. to be a drift with your brung day. I don't think I'd drift it. I think the last time, where's Matt Graham gone? I'm glad he's not here. The last time I went drifting, as much as I love and enjoy it, and I love watching it, and I absolutely find it so exhilarating. I wasn't any good at it. <laughs> if only there was someone this cool that's like a proper racing driver and's pretty good at it. What you mean, Brett? Five day that we did it hard. I, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I remember that. Sketchy came to that. Mm. A long time ago. Sketchy and the blue Mark One with the orange squares. I love that Mark One. Yeah. I miss Never. Sketchy. It's, it's good, man. It's still good. It's got his little girls and skateboarding yeah. and stuff. I don't know what happened to the Mazda. He might still he have is, it. He, but... he broke it and sold it, I think. He okay. is now the world's greatest skate hippie. He's the world's greatest dad, man. He's yeah. just, it's just such a hippie, isn't he? 
He, no offense, guys. Zero on, no kids, kids, no kids. now, but like, I absolutely love watching all his skate stuff with his daughters. I'm hooked every time I see Isn't it. Isn't it? It's gonna be a good story. I remember, so I cool. remember getting drunk at an event once and turning to sketch and go, "Will you be my dad?" <laughs> <laughs> wow. How much moonshine did you had? A lot. <laughs> Was it just yes at that point? What do you mean? Was it just yes at that point? How much have you had? Yes. <laughs> but yeah, shout out Sketchy, we love you. So, 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 like, oh, one more thing, Bam, about events is actually topical. Okay. We, we said that we brings us together. Yeah. Because of Claire's events, there's another. Cu- there's a couple that got married. Look, met at events. Who's that? I've forgotten their names. It was <laughs> Sue's. No, Mark. Mark, Mark and, and Sue. Sue. Mark and Sue. That was oh. three combustion punks, wasn't it? Yeah. They met yeah. at JE and they, they were both singletons and and they just chatted and got along and then like two years later they got married. And it's they're mad, still isn't it? Nep- they, yeah, would they have ever met without the, the MX5? Stuff, yeah, it's the MX5s that brings everyone together. It, re- it really is. Look at all these things you've done. Just, just now, just looking at it's the MX5 and just looking at all your little faces and like MX5 friend, MX5 friend. <laughs> it is, but it does bring people together as a community. And... Dude, so much so that that's literally what my it's not specifically on MX5s, but it's about the communitas that events provide and that liminal space where you're able to connect with people, learn through them, not just about cars but also yourself and. That, that sort of temporary event, you can grow so much from them. And that's why cars will forever be so important to me. And that's why I've got so much offer to events and to host and create things because I can understand it not just from an educational perspective, but first and primarily, it's like the actual experience that's changed my life. And I want to continue to create that for other people and bring other people together to enjoy cars and that community and that availability to grow on a personal level through cars. It's just like... And that brings (laughs) us, that actually brings us to a really important part of this episode, right? So yesterday, well, not yesterday now, but yesterday when we recorded this, right? Me and Claire were having a chat. So something that is going to be happening for you lot, and we'll announce more public when we've got more detail, is there will be a semi-slick promotions event that's supported by both us at Violent Running and Carfectionery. And we are looking for some venues. So, Auto Bright, Tagiwa, anybody else who might want to host us, hit me up. Let's slide talk. into DMs. <laughs> slide into Bam's DMs. <laughs> Hashtag no dick pics. <laughs> I mean, a sponsorship deal is a sponsorship deal. Milton, you've already got one. I don't need to see your peen. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> so, Rain, you can have him instead. It's fine. <laughs> hey. <laughs> So, so yes, as Claire says, it's all about the community. And genuinely, I think I have spent at least four years of my life trying to convince Claire to help us put an event together. Um, and that's why she's here talking events with us. Like, there's, there is no one else I would rather have talking about events and how to run them with us on this episode. So I think the, the, the important thing is, the first thing for me about organising an event for a club or a group of people is just make sure that you've got a good group of people to go. Right? One thing as well is also making sure that everyone can feel comfortable because I'd never met quite a lot. I don't think I'd met anyone in person on Emmett's of mm-hmm. Nuts and Combustion Punk stand. I'd never met him and turn up and it's not, who's that new guy? It was hi and hugs. It was, there's no mm-hmm. social awkwardness. Oh, You've not got real wheels. You've only got fake wheels. I'm not going to be your friend. The greatest, the greatest moment. One of those, one of those things that made me realise, like after the head injury, when I came back to the car community, one of those things that made me realise that it was still just a place of love and no one's going to judge you for who you are. Is the very first time I heard Claire introducing me to someone with the immortal words, "This is Bam. Bam's got Asperger's. He's probably going to offend you, but don't hate him for it." <laughs> right? And it was just that moment where it's like. 
Someone here's like defending me before I even do the fucking stupid thing. <laughs> <laughs> and we she, all... Claire, Claire's just your walking. I've got the word. Disclaimer. Alibi, excuse. Disclaimer. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> By agreeing to talk to Bam, you may get offended. Yep. <laughs> but I think I think you're right. I think like uh, it it is about the people that you bring, and it's not so much about numbers. There's far too many clubs out there today that are just focused on numbers. It's about quality. You can't provide quality if you're focused on quantity. So if you're hosting an event and you've got ten thousand people there. And you're all about that community vibe. How do you get that across? You can't Whereas, name every person in that. No, no. Whereas if you've if you've got somebody, if you've got an event that's for like I don't know, thirty people. Even I've, I've, yeah, I could maybe manage twelve names. But like, <laughs> if you've got an event for like a hundred to five hundred people, you're more likely to associate cars and names and faces and memories, or you're at least more likely to be able to engage with the majority of the community as they come. Hiya, thanks for coming as they go. Hiya, thank you so much for coming. I hope you've had a great time. It's it's so much easier to do that with a smaller number than it is with a larger number, therefore providing quality over quantity. And I think that's what a lot of clubs are missing these days. It's really hard to make sure everyone's happy when you're trying to please a mass audience. I think um, try, yeah. that's where that's where events are headed. I might be wrong, but from my I, research, I, I think you're right. I think you know if you think about the way the community, car community's gone, there's a lot of people out there at the moment just doing things for clout, and there's still this, pop up brands. Yeah, and there's just this there's this core. Of people that are just doing things for the long game and for the community, and and genuinely like the people we've surrounded ourselves with violent running, like Bryn, like Milton, like Matt from from you know all the Rad Boys as Connor Tish, Connor yeah Connor Tish is the original people that used to sit in a little campsite and Herdy, <laughs> me Connor and Tish and Herdy and put pulling up, with up you. <laughs> pulling no up man, at, don't do that. No, but, Bam, don't go over there. Bam, stop. Bam, where <laughs> did you get silly string? Bam, where did you get silly string from? And why is Herdy's car covered in it? <laughs> oh, fun times we had. <laughs> but that thing, and like, and as a club gets bigger, you're right, it becomes harder to know people. And when it becomes harder to know people, you get these little groups form. And when bigger clubs go, well, why did this other little group form their own club? we all want to be together and be bigger and the drama starts the reason is you got too big for your community at the I end think of there, it. Will, there will always be groups or clubs that want to be the mass that want to be the biggest and i think there's a space for them there really is a place for them as long as they manage it properly and they're there to inform the community and become a body of knowledge for the community there's absolutely no harm but I think there will always, always be a place, always, for the smaller groups where you have got that community vibe on a closer, more connected level, like us guys. We're never yep. going anywhere. We're friends for life. Do you know what I mean? It's it just it's just how it is because of the smaller groups that we've formed from. No matter how big you get, it's still... She yeah. says friends for life. I like to think of you all as friends until I drink so much I forget everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, like... Bam, you're right about the, oh. little, the, the little <laughs> groups and you just need the drama not to happen because the little, like you say the little groups will always form because as you you know you go to these events like the you know the combustion punks events mm. and stuff and you meet all those people and you're like yeah you know like combustion punks is my club i know all these people and then you meet a ryan and a matt and you guys have like an even smaller niche thing and you become your subgroup Yep. And like yeah. we became rad, but we were still under that umbrella. It wasn't like we wanted it to be separate. We were just like, yo, we're we're these little dudes and we're part of your big thing. But like, you know, we 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 want to always be together, us us guys. And you, and you we, get that. Yeah. You get the little yes. subgroups. You can't be like, oh, you're trying to break away from our identity. No, we just also got our identity. Yeah. I I, I sort of just love I love the car community because it's one of the, it's it's a love hate relationship with everything, isn't it? It's so it can be so political. So it's, as long as it's, you, yeah. you focus on what's important to you, and mm. as long as that's in the right direction for the good of everyone else, it sounds I mean, like proper history, man. But like, yeah, as long as your your intentions are for the greater good, you can be the biggest group or one of the smallest groups. It doesn't matter as long as your intentions are for the community and for the people that you're surrounding yourself with. 
that's all that matters at the end of the day. Just, but, yeah, yeah, just ignore the bad eggs. Yeah. There's always a bad egg in any group, no matter what. Or yeah, one person doesn't. Unfortunately, Bam stinks and we can't get rid of him. <laughs> He's just a bruised egg. He's not bad. Oh, I wouldn't eat him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like Bam, he needs to be put in a padded box. <laughs> oh, dear. I think. I think the other thing. I think the other thing you get actually these days in in the larger groups, especially like on Facebook, is. That I don't think I remember seeing when I like when old when when young man Bam like first got into cars and was doing the whole mini thing is like people didn't chat shit about other people's rides because well you got punched for it. <laughs> like I think that's just where you grew up. Uh, I'll be honest. <laughs> like, but you just didn't you didn't like walk up past someone and go. It's fucking shit. You'd appreciate the time and effort they put into it. It didn't matter how bad the outcome was. You'd go, oh, that's, you know, I appreciate what you've done there. Like, do you want a hand next time? Because I know some people that know some people. And that's how it was for me, like, in the car community. And I came back after the head injury and, like, someone went, someone turned around to me and was like, you can't put that car part on that car. And I was like, Why the fuck not. <laughs> I'm gonna. It's my car. <laughs> I pay that's, that's, that's really strange because that's where a lot of the YouTube channels and stuff are getting so much traction now is because they're doing things that other people either dislike, mm. haven't done, or wouldn't dream of doing. And that those that's the, those are the success stories. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So it just goes to show: ignore the criticisms and follow your heart. Do you know what I mean? And also, while uh, we're on the subject of that, subscribe to this channel, like this, so we can get monetized and we can do sex spec <laughs> daihatsu material. <laughs> Oh yeah, Claire. That's what that's gonna be our next show card, by the way. Okay, We went. Yep. We went on. Uh, day, no, day room it is. It was the day room it is. You're right. Wow. It was. So we went that's on. So weird. Do you remember a website from back in the day called Mad Motors that did the body kits, Claire? Okay. Okay. So we went on what used to be Mad Motors and has now been bought by somebody else, and found a kit for a day room it is. Full sex spec body kit. For yep. a day um it is. I can't even picture what it would look like. Oh, we'll show you. We'll awful. show you after the episode. Awful. Awful. Yeah. Claire, I've got, <laughs> I got some three quick fire questions for you. Ooh. Wow, for me specifically. Yeah. Milton. It's safe, don't worry, Beth. <laughs> don't worry. What's your favourite event you've ever been to? Oh, wow. That's quite easy, I reckon. It's uh, Miata's at Summertime, which it's now called, in Holland, which is mass. Um, it's it's held over in Holland. Um, wow. Yeah, I think I think a lot of it was the, the hospitality um, mm -hmm. of everyone over there. But that's probably got to be my favourite. And there was nothing, no offence, but nothing spectacular that was about it. It was just the vibes, the community, and probably for me, the entire journey over there. Like the driving across in the car and yeah, yeah. What about you guys? Best event, Milton. Mine would probably would have been one of the JEs we went to. Okay. Because it was just like doing the fancy dress competition and just watch, just walking around as a club, like messing around and laugh. And do you remember we was we was all Japanese karate people? Yes. And there was another group that were all sumo su sumo wrestlers. Yes. <laughs> and yes. we I... all decided to play British Bulldog. And yeah. <laughs> you'd think some of us, being small and slim, would go, I'm going to step out of this. But then you're in a group and you think, I'm going to run anyway. <laughs> so, so I'm going to follow on from that and say it is actually that JAE. Because I think the bit Milton's forgotten about that is the reason we ended up playing British Bulldog with them yeah. is because somebody <laughs> kidnapped one of them. <laughs> oh yeah, you picked him up, didn't you? Yep. But... I I ran I ran in. They thought they were gonna gaffer tape him to me and they were gonna run off with me. Nobody noticed that I'd squatted down slightly, so they weren't wrapping below my knees. They were just wrapping around my waist with this duct tape. As soon as they the roll snapped, I stood up and sprinted off with this guy, gaffer taped to me, and dumped him in the back of one of the security vents. 
But you know, the best thing about it was we all laughed and hugged and high yeah. It was. Yeah, all, both sides. Yeah, both clubs. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. a fight that started. It was. That was funny. Yeah. See you later, guys. Absolutely golden. And we, I think they even came over to the, the to the punk stand later on for beers and stuff. Like it's just it's just good vibes all the time. And 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 genuinely like. I had very similar vibes at Yakushi when we could camp the year before last. Um, when me and Joe Spencer had um, an adventure <laughs> two jars deep into the night. <laughs> and we said wow. hello to everybody. Literally everybody. That guy. At Yakushi, we said hello to everyone. Big up to the girls that gave me the shitty box wine. It was shit. <laughs> <laughs> Bryn, what's your favourite event you've ever been to? Uh, see, I, I say Gatville, but that's oh, because... that's that's a winner anyway. Well, it's because it's basically JAE, except somewhere even more exciting and exotic and bigger. <laughs> and on steroids. Yeah, it's the same thing, but bigger. But second place is going to be something like JAE. The only thing that I don't like about Jay Yukushi, those camping shows, is that at some point I have to drive again. That's that's the problem. That's the thing that puts me off. Is I know it's two days of getting wasted and having a good time, and then at some point having to drive. Yeah, it's the last day, the day before the day. We, it's ten o'clock now. We've got to drive at seven o'clock. We should stop drinking. It's now one a.m. We've got to drive in the six hours. We should stop drinking. <laughs> Yeah. I think that I think the best one we ever had for for drinking was turning up at turning up at one of the JAEs and Claire going right. We're going to set up the standout and me just eyeballing her dead in the eyes, grabbing a beer, cracking it open, and went, "Nope." <laughs> <laughs> it's just to be expected now, though, isn't it? To be fair, was that when everyone set up the huge? It was like a ten man gym. I think Jimmy Potter had it from his scouts. It was a ten, like twenty man scout hunt thing and we decided to set it up when everyone was half cut already yeah in the dark yep all right next question claire because we've got one thing from an event that you should think every other event should do oh wow if you can think of anything okay or like a weird thing that you've only ever seen at one event you're going that was really cool oh, can we come back to that can we come back that's a big question uh, what's your next event you're looking forward to? That's going to be Yakushi in September because I get to hang out with all of you guys. Hopefully, you guys come in. Eh? Um, is that the one you, we've got space for? I've saved seats for you and Bryn, yes. Cool. You just need, yeah. to, you just need to give me your ticket money. Are you? Take oh, all that sponsorship in. money. They're in, which means there's one space left, which is reserved for... Mick Stevens. Wow, yes, we've got him. We need to be sure that we can bring doggos. I'm pretty sure we can because we need... It's not a JDM show without a JDM doggo and Mick has got to bring UK. It's just got to happen. <laughs> well, you're wow. looking after events for me now, so you can check. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> I, I actually... I have I have my answer for question number two now, Milton. Um. I think going back to like the times of past events that we've been to, it's gonna be it's gonna be JAE, like the old JAE with Nigel and John. And it's gonna yeah. be it's it's pretty much what you described in fairness. I love the friendly competitiveness of the clubs. I love that. I think that's really, yeah. really cool, really important, really special, brings everyone together, eliminates diversity, age, gender, preference on cars. It, it sort of brings everyone together for the love of it, for the fun of it. I think that was, that's probably... Tug, yeah, tug of war, yeah, long, yeah, long boats, dragon boats. Everyone keeps forgetting that disgusting food competition. Yeah, I was about to say the food competition at UA. Yeah, I love Japanese food, man, but it's hard, I'll be honest. It's hard choosing off the menu because every time I remember that JAE and then fermented soybeans and... <laughs> Eels and all sorts of weird stuff that I ate, and we didn't even win. Pointless. And didn't didn't was it? Did um the hot food one as well? 
Yeah, yeah, like a spicy food in, in competition. Yeah, like really spicy. Yeah, at a camping show. No thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's a mistake. No. <laughs> Nobody needs to unleash the chocolate shotgun in a tent. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> I once went, right, I once went to Spa Circuit with TWP Racing. Yeah. Um, we arrived really late into the night. Um, I'd never been before, really disorientated, really needed the toilet. Sort of wandering up this hill, wherever we'd parked, I can't remember at the time, wandering up this hill. And I can see this sort of row of toilet blocks, all portable toilets. And they're all lit up in a really weird way, but we've been traveling for hours and things just look strange. And like I say, I'm disorientated and dehydrated and whatever. So I'm wandering up this hill. I'm like, oh my God, this is the longest hill ever. And I'm getting closer and closer to this row of portable toilets. And every single door is open, which I've never seen before. I'm like, okay, that's weird. Everyone's got a big light next to it. And on every toilet seat, there looks to be like some weird mountain. So, so I'm like walking closer and I'm like, oh, they stink. What's that weird mountain? Each one was brimmed. Absolutely. I don't know how. Right. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do what I think they did. They must have literally like got above the toilet like this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you. <laughs> In every single toilet, there was like a mountain of poo. And when what you got a go. was, I'm pretty sure what had happened was. Our race team, our race truck had driven over the water supply line, like as we'd driven in at some point during the day. And as I'd gone to those set of toilets, those were the set of toilets that we cut the water supply to. Oh, God. So no one had been able to flush. But yeah, that's probably one of the worst event experiences I've ever wow. had. <laughs> so when we host our own events, Bam, we need to make sure we've got adequate toilet facilities. <laughs> That can yeah. make an event, though, if you've got good toilet facility showers and stuff. I think, I don't know, the, one of the best sort of, yeah, you're going to have to, if you're camping and stuff, the best sort of so that, so, thing that's so, to bring people in is good facilities. Again, for sure. again, I'm going to appeal to the people watching this, right? Like if anyone's a, still watching after my squat. Like, that I mean, more people are watching after your squat, Claire. That's going to be the thumbnail. Thumbnail! <laughs> <laughs> so... So for all of you watching, if you want the gold-plated toilets at events, you've got to like and subscribe the video because otherwise I've got no money to do that. Otherwise, you, otherwise you're digging your own pit for your own <laughs> shit. <laughs> I've just had a brilliant idea. It's safe work, don't worry. Each club stand should have like a small square of concrete and they can elect one member from each club and they've got to do the biggest burnout. Whoever, and then you just look around the, the whole show area and you're like, oh, the GTR owner clubs are doing a little one. And then go over to the front wheel drive Hondas and, oh, there's a fire. <laughs> just think how brilliant it would be. You, where are you going to find a venue that's going to allow that? I mean, you can get concrete, like paving slabs. If they like and sounds... if they like this video and they subscribe to this video, maybe we can buy a venue. <laughs> That's just some concrete burnout slabs. <laughs> all you need is a little slab underneath each wheel. Just tie the car to the other cars on the stand. It's not going to go anywhere. Wow. Milton, that that no, that as a concept went downhill real quick. So um, trust me, Bryn can engineer it. I liked his idea though. I'm on board with the idea. I mean, it I like would work it. though, wouldn't it? Concrete slabs underneath yeah, the wheels. I mean, it's better than just sitting in the tent and shouting, do a burnout every time someone goes past. Like, I think you know, sanctions. I'm not going to name which show because otherwise we'll get in trouble. But I think you know from the year of Pickle Rick. Right. I, there was actually, when there was Drift Taxi in at one of the events, I think it was Learn to Drift, they went round the show at like 8 a.m. Okay. and they did a roll in burnout round the whole venue. That was it. <laughs> yeah. Conveniently, at another, there may have been a round of screaming at Barnacle. Eggs. <laughs> Why did you abuse them? Do a burnout. We weren't abusing him. We were shouting, "Do a burnout!" And for half an hour, so he did, and melted the tarmac in front of the stand. <laughs> yeah, that's why right. you do a rolling burnout. Security, yeah. security came up to me the next morning and went this is in front of your stand who did this and i just went i literally 
held the empty bottle of vodka that I drank the night before and went, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, fair enough. One, how are you not banned from all events? And two, how are you so confident publicly displaying this information on the web? Because we've not disclosed which show or which venue. Definitely. But it was definitely you. I, I didn't do it. He can't do a burnout. <laughs> I can't. I forgot. Because I drank so left... much vodka that night. <laughs> you put your left foot in, your right foot in, you lift you've your also, left foot you've out. Also, and you've your left also got to remember in. that like the br- <laughs> some of the brands that like to work with me that don't necessarily like having their logos all over my cars is because I have a certain reputation for being an a, idiot, a bell end in public. <laughs> ah, you saw first. Mate, he swore hours ago. Yeah, it's been hours. <laughs> so it? did Bryn. I'm surprised. Yeah, like... I'm surprised you two haven't sworn yet. What do you mean? I'm a choir boy. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Fuck it out. Link in description to my OnlyFans. Whooshy thing. <laughs> yeah, whooshy thing. In fact, no, uh, epically long bleep. <laughs> <laughs> explosion. You can have an explosion, Milton. Alright, uh, you can just put a really long explosion in there. I'll just put the normal explosion that I have all the effects for in at your. And just house. copy and paste it like ten times instead of doing a bleep. Yeah. Got your back. Editing. <laughs> bam! Future bam! Don't forget to edit the bleep and the thing. <laughs> yeah, we we have to remind him. Ago, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so I reckon we're. We've, we've waffled a bit. We've waffled I reckon we need to wrap up because I'm doing the shaky leg because I real need a piss. Right. So on that note, where Bryn needs to go to the little boys' room, uh, I've been Bam. He's been Bryn. He's been Milton. Toodles. Maybe we'll re- that way. <laughs> Maybe we'll replace Matt with Claire again. <laughs> Much prettier. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Matt. I give Matt abuse, but he knows I love him and I will give him the biggest hug when I'm allowed to see him. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. We all I love, love Matt. Guys. I gave Matt a hug on Wednesday. Yeah, we all give Matt a lot of abuse, don't we, In Bryn? the office. I hope HR don't find out. <laughs> no, you gave him a... It I was a it. construction work-based thing. No, I meant course. to stay... Currently, under our work rules, I meant to stay two metres away from him. <laughs> You're meant to stay two metres away from anyone. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Anyway, thank you everybody for watching. Have an awesome week. There will be the video from Caffeine and Machine at that magical event. What that random red-haired lady from Semi Slick Promotions put on and invited me down to. Uh, Probably the week after will be the Birmingham Wheels video that we keep promising you. Um, I've got the footage now. I've got the footage now. It's all right. Um, And uh, have a good week. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. I need piss. I need a piss.